Hallelujah. Oh, yes. We give him the standing ovation that he deserves, and he deserves an ovation from Yisrael. And if we acknowledge him in all of our ways, then he shall guide our derech, our path, our halach, the way that we walk and the way that we travel before him. So what a great blessing that he grants unto Yisrael as we gather here in the Bayat to hear what Yah speaks unto his elect, his people. He is not speaking unto the masses of the world, Yisrael. He is speaking to that nation of people whereby he imparted the power of his ruach to guide, to discipline them according to his counsel. And he is speaking to a nation that should be, should have been, and ought to be the pattern unto all nations of the earth by their beauty, their lifestyles, the way they live, the way that Torah commands them, and they are in command of wisdom and understanding of the Torah, then it shall be a light unto all the nations of the earth, and only then shall we be that luminous city that sit upon a hill, uh, that even the, nothing can be hid, and illuminates the very excellent, the beauty of Yah, and your Shua Hamashi, because that is our testimony. I do want to, as I began some time ago, I did not teach it on Wednesday that Zachen Yaramaya was supposed to be here, but he was out working. I want to continue on that path that I began. But before I do that, I want to read an excerpt from an article to show us the hubris, this vile nature of this nation. And those that think that they are the supreme rulers of the earth, but Yah is going to bring this wicked, dirty nation down to the gates of hell. I'm telling you that. The arrogance of this nation is like no other nation before it. I want to read just one paragraph of this article. As I scan through the Observer today, I stumble across this. I don't do much reading, but there are things that truly catch my eyes when I see it. It's just the arrogance of the statement. And this is how the article is entitled by Seth Rosenstein. Seth Rosenstein. It says, quote, experts, Gingrich's moon base is in lunacy. We know who you're talking about, uh, the uh, Republican nominee that's running for the Republican presidency, Newt Gingrich, this vile beast, dirty child of hell, an unfaithful bastard, his wife on her deathbed nearly, he brings in a divorcement. He leaves her and he involves himself with that when he marries her. Then he leaves her for this, I don't know what that beast he calls a woman today that stands by his side. No, the pigmentation of her skin, it looks like a pig. That's it. But this is what this arrogant beast out of the belly of hell, this is his statement. Re Republican presidential candidate Newt Gingrich wants to create a lunar colony that he says, you all hear this, I want you to hear this. I know that we are a people, we just don't give a damn. Words mean nothing to us. But he wants to create a lunar colony. He said, I want to create a lunar colony that he says that could become a state of the United States. He wants to create a state, a colony on the moon and say that because we are the supreme people, because we have more wisdom than every nation of people, it is amazing that all the wisdom that and the knowledge, the technology of this supposedly mind of great interpretation, we're in the hellish mess that we're in, and the world 
is being raped, and robbed, corrupt, destroyed. So this bastard out of hell says that our arrogance and our haughty nation, nation, nature says that we can create a lunar colony that would become a U.S. state. There his grand research plan to figure out what makes the human brain tick. This is the stupidity of this individual that many calls, call him smart and intelligent. But this is this fool. And this is supposed to be part of the brain trust of this ignorant nation. He says we're going to do more than what Nimrod did. We're going to exalt ourselves uh, on the creation of Yah that he commanded to be a ruler of night. And we shall take charge of that. Yah is going to bring this nation, the Britons of the world, the France of the world, the Germans of the world, the Swedish of the world. He's going to bring them down to hell, to the yeah. gates of hell, because this is the thinking and this is the logic that it defies Yah. It is a depraved mind. It doesn't give a damn about humankind or mankind. It has no cognitive conscious reason as to what a human is because this is not even human thinking. This is not the thinking of Adam. And so he is going to, they are going to real estate the moon and say this is part of our real estate. And the minds of these fools is just that arrogant. That mind is just that arrogant that it would try something of that. And Yah is going to burn them all into hell. And I mean that. And he has warned against the electromagnetic pulse attack, leaving America without electricity. So what he is implying uh, that even though the magnetic Electronic, electronic pulse attack that even we're losing some of our ability to create electricity here in this nation. This nation is a greedy, wicked nation. I'm going to sit down tonight. It is a very vile, wicked nation. We must not allow men like that to establish our conscience about matters in life. We cannot listen to that, Yisrael. We cannot hear these lies and one that is that corrupt that he defies the very standards of Omar Yah. He made the moon to be the lesser light. That's why he called it Yah, Yareach. He made the Shemesh, the sun, to be the greater light. And these vile beasts of hell, their conscience, it is no conscience of the Creator. At all. This pig of a man, he looks like a vile, unclean pig. That's what he looks like. I'm not going to take it back. <clears throat> you know, there is no statesmanship of quality about this man. I look at some of these men. They look so twisted in their logics of their mind. There is nothing about that man that is admirable. He was a dirty beast. He was a corrupt dog out of hell. And they're all thieves and they love one another. And so they cover the sins of each other, their wicked, vile ways. Yah is going to bring this nation down to the gates of hell. And you think you're going to stand up with arms and defend something that is so repulsive? We don't give a damn about defending the Torah of Yah and you going to defend a stake in this nation with your little pea shooters, your guns, your little pop pistols. You're going to defend a stake in this most repulsive, vile, whorish nations upon the face of the earth. Something is twisted in your mind. 
And if any man tells you that, you go sell your garments, I will show us tonight what you must sell in order to purchase what is necessary to sustain yourself in the way of Almighty Yah. Now these same individuals will say that they have the great power of Yah. They can cast out demons. They have power to bind. And yet they are telling the people what Yoshua Hamashiach, that he commanded his Talmudim, those that were disciplined under the order of the Torah, that you go sell your garment, our filthy rights, what we call clothing, and then you go buy a sword, a charet, a weapon of offense and defense. There's only one mighty weapon of the offensive nature and the defensive nature. And I will bring that to light tonight. So if any man tells you uh, you need to purchase arms uh, and silver and gold, uh, they're the children of hell because, first of all, uh, they are unbelievers. They have no, they have no courage of Yah at all. Uh, they are weak, shallowly men, uh, and they're not men of strength and character. What will we trust in? Well, I will give us uh, two accounts uh, as to what we will trust in. I want to begin here on tonight, and I will get to Lucas, all right? <clears throat> But I want to read this quickly out of the book of uh, Yeshu Yeshua ben Nun, uh, or the book of Joshua, Joshua, chapter 23 and verse 9. This is the messenger of Yah, <clears throat> as he exhorts Yisrael, even the, the assurance of Yah, even though he knew death was approaching him, uh, he knew that it was his time uh, to leave. So he consciously reminded them <clears throat> great power of the Most High. And he speaks to them emphatically here in Joshua 23 and verse 9. He says unto Yisrael, For it has been almighty, Yah, for Yah has driven, he has literally seized and taken authority, or Yarash. He has driven out from before you, Yisrael, and he uses the word not rab, but Gadol, great, powerful, Goen. do you hear that? Yah has. It was not the strength of Yisrael, but it was Yah. He has driven out some of the most prominent nations of power they were assumed, they were strong, they were very mighty, they had strength militarily, and he said Yah was the one that drove them out. He drove the nations out that were great before you, nations that were strong. He said, but as for you, Yisrael, no man, and uh, Jacob or uh, 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 Joshua, Yahshua, he is the enigma or the sign or the very significance of what Yisrael truly is. And he said, no man, no nation, no people, no man has been able to stand before you this day. In essence, there has been no man that is able to overthrow you or take you down. There has been no mighty nation or strong nations. So, although they had the finery of weaponry and mighty machines of death, but it was by the power of Yah that he drove them out. He was the one that uh, Yarash, he seized upon them. He took possession of the nation. They were given unto his power and he delivered them unto you, Yisrael. And so Yahshua is telling us as a nation that we go buy a damn pop pistol, buy some gold, buy some silver. That's the strength of our sustaining. It is a lie from hell. It is a corrupt mind that doesn't know Yah. Yah has driven, he has Yarash. He has seized upon the nations. He has overthrown them. He has caused them to be a possession unto Yisrael. 
He has given you an inheritance that is Yarash. He has given you an inheritance among that nation. And he has given you possession. This is what he said. Hallelujah. And then he says unto us as a nation, he said, one man, one man of you, not two. You hear me? There are those that will respond to us and ask me, do I cast out demons? And yet they have demons in them. That's that doctrine. That demons must always be cast out of you. And yet these are the same ones that are telling people to buy guns and weapons to defend what? A vile, dirty, wicked whore like the United Snakes of America to defend a vile whore to stand your grounds. Your sure said, my kingdom is not of this old lamb. If it was so, then my abbot, my servants, would fight for it. I would. I would fight for it. He did not come to establish some kind of military dominion in the natural realm. For the battle that we are engaged in is much greater than that, Israel. He said, one of you. One of you, Yisra'ya, one man of you, uh, shall rada, he shall chase. Just what I mean, put to flight, uh, he shall chase uh, a thousand. Uh, you tell me these men call themselves mighty? They're telling you to purchase guns, buy silver, and yet they're supposed to have their, quote, holy ghost, unquote. They have a damn ghost. But they do not have the ruach of Yah. Yeah. The wicked fleeth, the wicked radaf, when no one pursue him. So wicked man is going to run. They're going to run to the covering uh, of the garment uh, of the baggage of their mind because their garment is unclean. Their minds are unclean. They are not cloaked with the sadiq. Of Almighty Yah. So they're telling you to buy guns. That's what your sure meant. You are a damn liar. That's not what he meant. He would be contradictory of what your commands here. He would be contradictory as to what we should rely upon for our strength and assurance. This is an assurance that this man gives to Israel, knowing that his time is near and his time is short. And that he is going to leave this ram. He confirms it that one of you, one man of you, shall rada, shall chase to put the flight a thousand. For Yah, your Abba, he is, for Yah, your Abba, did I read that right? For Yah, your mighty one, for Yah, your almighty, he shall what? He shall what? fight you tell me that I must defend this battle the book of Ibram Hebrews tell us that many there were those of Imuna that they were put to the sword they died by the sword but they had confidence in Almighty Yah they did not raise up a sword they did not go and get their Mac 10 he says for Yahweh he is for Yah, your Abba, he it is uh, that Loham, he is the one that fights for us. Simply Loham, uh, he is the one that engage into the military structure battle uh, for Yisrael. He is the one that fights for us. You don't buy a weapon with that intent, Yisrael. You don't buy a gun for that intention. That you're going to fight the battle of Yah with some kind of a little pop, pop, pee thing. It's not of Yah, Yisra'ya. I don't care what these liars say. They have no confidence in the Torah of Yah. They're weak men. They're shallow men. And I'm not afraid to tell them that. For Yah is he that fights for Yisra'ya. He is the one that fights for you. As he has promised Yisra'ya. He has promised us that. 
And if they say their Jesus may have told them to get a weapon, but they're damn liars if they said, you sure said that. Their Jesus in them interpreted it that way, uh, but that's not the expression of Yah because uh, he says he has promised. And we know that the word promise is the same as Daba. It is written uh, in the book. So we have read that, uh, and this is the security of Yisra'ya. Yah is the one that fight for us, Yisra'ya. You don't have to pick up a weapon. We have a weapon uh, that is murder. Yeah. There's no weapon mightier than the indignation of Yah's indignation. He is the one that fight for you. Uh, and then he confirms uh, the people of Yah. He gives them uh, a place that they must know with the assurance, with the assurity of Yah. He says unto them in verse 11, he says, Yisra'ya, take heed, or Shema, watch yourself diligently here. Listen to the Ru'ach of Yah. He said, take heed, therefore, to yourself. Take heed to yourself that you find out where you are, that you love Yah, your Abba. Who are you loving? Are you loving uh, uh, a, a forty-five caliber? Or you got your carbine rifle that you're going to pick them off? Yah is the one that knows where our enemies are. He sees them. Well, you don't even see our, your enemies. Yah knows where they are. He got his eyes on them. When there are those that are plotting against you, that's all right. Let them plot. You don't even have to defend yourself in the matter. Well, you say things that time, man. Yeah, and I leave it alone after that because it is of no value. Listen, Yisraya, you think that I'm going to get here and not give us wisdom to advance ourselves. And my only thing that I reverberate continuously are the things of hearsay and those against me. You think that I would brutalize our minds in that fashion? I won't do that, Yisraya. Yah is the one that fights for us. He is the one. He has promised us that. And Yahshua is the Torah of Yah. He is the, the living word of Yah. He has promised us that, Yisrael Yah. He is the one that fights for us. And if you're sure or in the writings of Lucas and Metitia, then it is contradictory to this. Well, there's no witness there. Well, okay, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everyone be established, right? Well, let us understand the very essence of the utterance of the voice of Moshe out of the book of Dibarim. Let's see if he speaks the same thing. All right? Let's see what Moshe says here out of the book of Dibarim, chapter 32 and verse 28. He's speaking to Yisra'ya, the nation of Yah. Dibarim, chapter 32, verse 28. He says, for they, and he's talking to us, we are a nation that is about, we are void of counsel, of the Musa of Yah. The counsel is Yah's chastisement, it is Yah's correction, and it is Yah's rod put upon our buttocks. So we are nation, he expressed, he's letting us know we are nation void of counsel. And when we have no counsel, we began to counsel ourselves. He said, neither is there any tabum, not bina or bina, any tabum. And that is simply, there is no intellectual deducting of Torah that you can simply understand the latter. He said, there is no tabum among them or in them. He says, oh, that they were wise. Wouldn't it be excellent if we were wise people of understanding he said that they may understand this. What do you want us to understand, Yah? What is this Moshe wants us to understand? That they will consider, let us do this, consider our latter end. Consider the Akharith, the latter day, the young Akharith, the latter time of the day, our latter end. This is what we must consider. Listen to this in the next verse. He says, how... How should one chase a thousand? You hear that? How should one chase a thousand and to put ten thousand to fly? Can I ask us? If you, my Zakhain, and I, 
we bunker down in here with an arsenal of weapons and there are thousand men out there. How long you think that's going to last? With all the ammunition we got, days go by, we get weary, we get sleepy, we get tired, we succumb to that. I don't care if we are snorting methamphetamine all day. We may stay awake for four, five, six, seven, eight, ten days without sleep. But all of a sudden, it comes down on you. And they're going to walk in here like dogs and stomp you to hell. So Yah's trying to give us assurance uh, that one will chase a thousand if we consider our latter end. Do we understand what our latter end is? Shaul says to be absent from the bazaar, the flesh, is to be present before I'm with Almighty Yah. To be absent from this body is to stand in the majesty of His beauty. We're trying to defend this, to preserve this, to save it. We cannot save it that way, Yisrael. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? You and I, my ach, my zachim, what can we do with an arsenal in every window in this tabernacle? And there are ten thousand around us. What are we going to do in the natural? Can we overtake them? Can we battle them? They sit out there all day and just shoot, shoot with a natural, with a natural artilleries. You understand. But we operating in the power of his promises. Uh, one will be able to chase a thousand, a, 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 a legion of demons. One should be able to chase that. Two should be able by the formidable power of Yah. Because they are in agreement, their ikat, uh, and the power of their prayer is greater than any weapon uh, that we can purchase from the smiths that Yah has created. He has made them. Two shall chase 10,000 to flight. He said, how can that be? How can we as one? Are we not one Yisrael? Are we not Ichat in Yeshua HaMashiach? And only Yisrael can chase. And only Yisrael can put the powers of hell to flight. This one or this Ichat, it means more than just a singular man. There was one man, Yeshua HaMashiach. He went down to the depths of the grave, Sheol Hell. And he took the power of death. And he said to Yisrael, those that died with him, rise up. Let's go into Yerushalayim where the shalom of Yah is your promise. So there is one. We have the witness of the Ruach. And two, we as Yisrael and the power of his Ruach, did not the Ruach bring and make Quicken your shoe alive? Did it not? So the numerics of Torah, they're significant. We have just been raped in our minds. That's why Yah says there is no taboon. No taboon. No intelligent ciphering of the Torah. There's, there's no intellectual uh, capacity among my people. He said, I know that, but consider the latter end. Now just see what this shall be. Hallelujah. One shall chase a thousand, two shall put ten thousand in flight. The only way we can, can do that, except, except, the only way, Yisrael, we're not going to do it with weapons. These, men's are, these men are liars. They're corruptors. You're not going to do it with a little military or a contingency of those dressed in their fatigues and their military power. Yah has raised up this demonic army against Yisrael. He has raised up the scours of hell to seek us out. Sure he has. He has raised them up. He has birthed them from the wombs of their birth. 
They have death in their veins. A death in their loins. And he says, I've raised them up to come against you. How can we do this? Except, except their rock. Except Yah had sold them. That he had given us or permitted us uh, to be in the position we're in. And sometimes we wonder why we're in this position, why my circumstances are this way, uh, because he's letting us know, Yisraya, it's not the carnal weapons. We have weaponry that is greater than that. That is greater. He said, and Yah had shut them up. And the confirmation in verse 31, for their rock, the rock of the world, their strength is not our rock. Their weapons are not our rock. For their rock is not our rock. Even our enemies themselves be in judges. Let the enemy judge us. Let them consider us. Let them, uh, let them be our shoftim, Yisrael. We as a nation, one nation. He's going to bring the nation together, Yehuda and Ephraim. And when they come together in the unity of the Ruach of Yah, there is no weapon of hell that will stand against them. None whatsoever. That's why he must raise up the Nobi, the prophet, the messenger to refine us in our ways, in our way of walk, Israel. We must be refined. We cannot get indignant when Yah speaks to us. We cannot do that, Israel. Yah is the one that has positioned us he is the one that has placed us in the position we're in. I want to direct our attention quickly back to the book of Lucas because I want to, I want to process this somewhat uh, in a quick way tonight, all right? Hallelujah. It says in the book of Lucas, chapter 22, and verse 35 and 36, quickly. And Joshua said to them, uh, when I send you without purse and strip and shoes, um, he said, you did not hassar, you did not like, uh, you were without anything. You did not like anything. And they said nothing. Then said Yoshua to them, but now he that has purse, let him take it and likewise his strip up. Uh, he said, he that has no harap or no sword, uh, he says this. He did not say, sell your purse. Uh, he said, let him sell uh, his garment, his beggar, his treacherous, deceitful, wicked ways. Uh, you cannot buy the riches of Yah. You cannot buy the intrinsic things of Yah. In this nature of our garment, this khali, this simla that we dress our minds in. He said, let him go sell his garment and buy again one. One will chase a thousand. One man of you shall chase a thousand. He said, let him go buy one. Then Yahshua said, it says in verse 37, For I say to you that this that is written must yet be accomplished. In me, and I was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me, they have an end. And they said, Yahshua, behold, there are two. One shall chase a thousand, and two shall chase ten thousand. It is all significant. There's a broken house. We are broken. We have a spiritual nature to uh, pursue the things of Yah. And we have this carnal aspiration that drives a wedge between us and Yah. That is what Yisra'ah, that is what Reboham did uh, when he brought the wedge between uh, the house uh, of Yisra'ah. And we allow our flesh uh, and our nature to drive a wedge uh, between us uh, and the promises of Almighty Yah. So he said... Uh, he are two. And he said to them, it is enough. Among 11, among 12, that's enough. Two, it is enough to the very heart of Yah to see the very divisiveness among Yisrael. It is enough, Yisrael. Yoshua said, it is enough. So they're telling you to buy the weapons. How many do you need? How many? Yoshua said two were enough for a contingency of his disciplined ones. 
So how many do you need? How many weapons do you need? That is not the analogy of that. That is a corrupt, unscrupulous, uh, ignorant interpretation of what he said. It is. He was not telling us to buy pistols to defend ourselves or to defend. Yah fights our battles for us. Even when the wicked rise up in their valiant effort, he will lift up a standard against them. You don't even have to open your mouth. Just the mere presence of the Ruach of Almighty Yah. Just your mighty stance. You don't have to deliver words to the wicked. For the wicked fleeth with no man. You don't even have to pursue the wicked. And they will run. You tell me I need a gun for this wicked nation. You tell me this little group. And you that are listening. We all have weapons and an assortment of all kind of artillery flying in on us. What are you going to do? The knocking holes in your windows and your doors. What are you going to do? Your babies are crying and it never ceases. You're lying on the floor. You can't even get a shot off. What are you going to do? That's not what Yorkshire was talking about. Yah is the one that if he doesn't fight our battles, uh, we're in a losing uh, situation. We're not going to win. We're not going to win. For, for the few men that we have here, we all grab a weapon uh, fighting against the onslaught. Uh, they destroy us. They come uh, and destroy the daughters of Tizion as well. Uh, we stand in the might of his promises. And we die in these promises. It's either he's telling us the truth uh, or this word is not worth even the paper it has been written on. It is by the measure of what he put in you, Imuna, that you have the power to believe it, Israel. You have the power to believe it uh, and it shall sustain you uh, in the midst of all of the battles. We have that power. The men and women do not have that ability to believe that. Uh, you believe and you trust it. There is no evidence before you but just what he says. No more than the sun rises and sets every day. He said that and you just believe it. He has put that in you, Yisrael. He's not going to allow the world to rob that. Moving quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to show us, re, uh, reassess this matter again, what we should buy. Shalomo says here in Proverbs uh, 23, 20. And I want to break this down a little bit. Deal with the garbage just for a few moments here. He says here in Mishli, Proverbs 23, 23. He says, I want you to call now. I want you to buy, sell, buy. Ha'imat. Ba'imat ha. Or buy the truth. You don't fight against Torah. You don't fight against the wisdom of Yah. When one buys, one sells out. As one says, I'm sold out. I'm sold out for Yah. I have soul. I have bartered away my intentions and my motives to please Him. So we buy the truth. We let the truth rip and tear out of us those things that oppose Yah. That's how you buy it. How do I know? Well, I will show us what Yeshua says. He says, I want you to buy truth. He says, and do not macha, do not sell it. Don't buy it. Don't sell out to your flesh. Well, I know it's right to do, but I won't do it. I know Yah commands me to trust Him, but, but, but you know how that is at time. And don't sell it. You don't sell out the wisdom of Yah. You don't allow your flesh and your kernel mind to purchase that, and there is no reward from that. Buy it and sell it not. And not only do you buy that, but you also buy the chukmah, the wisdom of Yah. What is Yah's wisdom? There is only one true definitive of the wisdom of Yah. It gives us the nature, the mind, the conscious, how to battle in a spiritual and natural battle with the skillful skills and diplomacy of Omani Yah out of Torah. Yah fights for us. That's what the wisdom is. It gives us the skillful nature it gives us the power to fight the battles of Almighty Yah. We are set to defend 
what he has given unto us truth. We're set as a defense for the truth of Yah. We're not trying to defend no property. We're not trying to defend no cattle. We're not trying to defend no goats. We're not trying to defend our reputation. We're set to defend the opposition of hell from encroaching in our minds and ridding our conscience of the truth of Yah through any kind of religious activity. That's what we're set to do. So we buy the truth. We buy Torah. And we buy the Muzah when Yah discipline you. When he corrects us. When he puts the rod to us. Don't defy Yah. Don't do that. Don't do that, Yisra As many as Yahshua receives, he corrects, he Musa, he counsels. And by the counsel of Yah, the instruction, his correction, his discipline, and also, he tells us to buy, you know, understanding. Not taboon, but understanding, the ability to discern. Someone tells you to go buy guns, send the offering here. And I got a weapon you don't have to worry about. You understand? Send the offering here. They tell you to buy guns, send it here. You, you're going to get a great return on the weapons that I use, all right? He said, this is what you buy, Yisrael. Do we have monies to buy this? Listen, I want you to hear this. We don't have the financial ability to buy this because you can't buy this with currency. You can't buy with the fiat currency. You can't buy with silver and you can't buy it with gold. Kefar said, my friend, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I give unto you in the name and the power of Yahshua's mighty name. Rise and be here. Rafa. Get up. Get up. This what Yah sells you can't buy with silver. You cannot buy with gold. We need the sword, Israel. We need to sell this baggage. We need to sell this garment. This uh, garment, sell it back to the world. Give it back. It has robbed you. It has taken from us. You can't buy this with the fiat currency. Hallelujah. I will show you how you buy it. This is how you get it, Yisrael. In the Novi, you can only understand this only. It comes by the secrets revealed unto Yah to his Novi, the prophet. And there is one by the name of Yeshua, Isaiah. He tells us what to do. Listen. Isaiah 55, 1. This is the prophetic prophecy of the utterance of the voice of Yoshua Hamashiach. He says unto us, Shalom. I know what it says in your writing. Isaiah 55, 1. Shalom. Everyone that saw me, that thirst. Do we thirst? Do we thirst for Yah? He said, you that thirst shalom to you, the, the blessings of Yah, the rust of Yah, the, 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 the shalom of Yah rust upon you. He says, shalom to everyone that saw me, and literally that is uh, the thirst. He said, come you uh, to the Mayam, the waters. Come to the living Torah. Come to the waters. And he that has no money, do you have money? We don't have money. He said, he that has uh, no kasef, uh, silver, Gold, fiat currency, money, it makes no difference. It is still kesef. It is kesef. Whether it's money or silver, it is still kesef. He said, you that have no money, come. Yeah, how can we buy with no money? He says, come, you. He says, buy. How can we do it? We buy by imuna. We lay our faith down and we buy the truth. I believe it. As the old one was said it, Yah said it, I believe it, and that's enough. They were ignorant. They did not know. Uh, he commands us to come and buy. He commands, this is what your shoe sure says, go sell your garment. Uh, give up that baggage. Give up that filthy garment. Uh, hate that garment that has been spotted by the world. Uh, deny it. And come to the living waters. Uh, Come to the well of refreshing. Your shoe is the living water. He, the, the, the Torah is the living well of Yah. He said, come and buy. He said, come and share I want you to buy. 
You come and buy Yisra'ya. He says, buy. He says, not only do you buy, but eat. How can you buy and eat without money? By the faith of Yah, by his imuna. What he is selling, only Yisra'ya can buy. The world can't buy it. You know the world and give it, and the world can't take it away. You can't buy this unless you're Yisra'ya. Unless you have the top of the seal of Yah, you can't buy this. He said, come, I want you to buy. He says, I want you to eat. He says, come, and I want you to buy wine. The fresh, the yayan. Not just the old wine, the vinegar. He said, I want you to buy the yayan, the fresh. The fresh wine in the new skins. The most expensive wine. He said, come and buy the healing balm, the wine of Gilead. He says, and I want you to buy the halab, the milk. He says, without, lo, without. Do you hear that, Yisra'ya? These are liars. They're telling you that silver is going to buy you the wine to mollify your, your deep wounds. It's not going to be. They tell you that, uh, that you buy the silver. You bought it with that. It's not going to be, Yisra'ya. He said, come and buy without. And this you cannot buy with money. You cannot buy the Torah. You cannot buy truth with money. You cannot buy wisdom with money. You cannot buy the sword of Yah with money. You cannot buy it. He said, come and buy low without, low, low without, buy without money. It is without, without price. Because you couldn't buy it if he put a price on it. You cannot pay for the truth uh, if he put a price on it. Uh, you cannot buy the sword of Yah if he put a price on it. Uh, what are you going to pay him with? Uh, the world couldn't buy it. Uh, all the wealth. The earth and the fullness. If Yah was hungry, what would we feed him? Uh, for the earth of the fullness there of his is. Uh, the cattle uh, upon a thousand hills. Uh, they belong to Yah. Come, he commands us, come and buy this. Come and buy this weapon without money, without price. It has no price. If I put a price on it, you couldn't pay it. That's why I tell you to come without money. You can buy this without money. It is a promise unto Yisra'ya. You just believe. How do I believe? Just believe. But I fall and I flounder and I fall. I'm not far. I fall down and prostrate. He said, buy it. I'm afraid, y'all. I'm afraid to ask you how much you want for it. Just buy it. You've been in that position. You want to get something. You don't know how to ask how much it is. And you're afraid if they tell you how much it is, you know you don't have it. And then they tell you way below what you thought it was. And you just get happy, don't you? That's all. When they tell me that, I get aggressive. I want you to go lower than that. Sure I do. I got a lot to you. So Yah say, come and buy without price. Because if I put a price on it, you couldn't buy it. There's only one thing I require. You take heed and love me with all your heart, soul, your heart, all your love, all your nefesh, all your lava, and all your koach, all your strength. Love me. That's all I command. That's it. Come and buy. Come and buy this truth. Come and get this weapon. Come and get this sword. Hallelujah. Not, not, not a gun. Not a gun. There are folks that have had guns and they cut off their rounds and they're dead in the grave today. There are folks that have their weapons in every room in the house going to protect everything and they're dead today. The Melak Ayah is encamped about them that fear ya. You fear for your damn dirty filthy flesh, man. Come on, woman. No. We can buy this without money. You don't need the kesef. It's going to take more than money to purchase this Yisra'ya. And that is the truth. Hallelujah. Come and buy without money. You have no money, he says, and without mecher, without a price. I'm so glad. For the doll or the only, the poorest of man, and the most strengthless woman can come and buy. They can buy. In the most heart-wrenching poverty situation, they still can buy. He said, come and buy. And you don't need money. You don't need the silver. 
And you don't need the goal of these liars and these money changers. They're taking your money. How stupid are we? They're taking your money. They're taking your fiat currency. And you can't buy the gold without fiat currency. And believe me, they're not stacking no silver and gold uh, in their little private accounts or in their little uh, uh, their, their, their safe deposit boxes. Uh, they're not stacking that in there. They're stacking 20s and $100 bills, uh, $50 bills. That's what they're stacking, believe me. They want the fiat. You understand? Uh, that's why Yah says, my people, uh, they have no taboo. They're not wise. Uh, they're not intelligent people. They don't understand uh, we're not intelligent people. We as a nation, we're not intelligent people. We can think highly of ourselves, but we're not. Yeah. He got something that is greater than the riches of the world. Let's buy this, Yisrael. Yeah. Let's buy this, my friends. Yeah. Don't worry about buying the pistol. Buy this right here. Come all to Yahshua and buy it. He is the living world of Almighty Yah. Yeah. Yeah. The Syrophoenician Phoenician woman said... Uh, Sir, my, my forefathers, Abraham, dug this well. He said, I have water to drink. And I have a living water. And when you drink of this well, you will thirst no more. She said, man, give me some of that water. I'll, I'll dump this out. I don't want this. Because if you drink that, you're going to thirst. And if you go the way of the world, you're going to die the way of the world. You would have died that way, Yisra'ya. I'd rather die in his arms uh, than to die protecting uh, this damn vile flesh. Don't try, Yisra'ya. Don't try us. All right? You will be a fool to try the people of Yah. All right? All right. Keep yourself in the safety net, my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, by the sword. We know what the sword is. These individuals will tell you to buy a gun, and you're sure did not say buy a gun. Well, the interpretation is a sword. No, we will see what the Torah says about the sword, all right? Hallelujah. Quickly, we're moving. Turn to Gilead, the Revelation. Quickly, Gilead, chapter 1, verse 16. Hallelujah. I'm trying to sit down tonight, but it's hard for me to do that. As Granny would say, my foot's not my feet. My foot's get the itching. And I have to roam on the turf of Yah. Look at what Yahshua says here. Look at the power of this truth unto us. Revelation chapter 1 verse 16. This is the vision of Yachanan. Revelation chapter 1 verse 16 when he saw the power of Yahshua. He said, uh, and he, this is Yahshua. He had in his right hand seven stars. That represents the seven Rachem of Yah. We need that. Damn a pistol. Damn Smith and Weston. We need the seven Rachem of Yah. The seven spirits of Yah. He says, so the power of Yah's government in his right hand. Everything in the right hand. We'll get to that in, the, in this teaching of the mark of the beast. And we'll understand the reason for the right hand. We're not going to proceed there tonight. How about that? He said, I saw in his right hand seven stars. And out... Of his feth, his language, his mouth, went a sharp two edged chara, a sharp sword. He said, You go sell your garment and you buy this truth. For the Torah of Yah is powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, and it cuts, it rends, it destroys. And out of the mouth of your shoe, we need to buy this truth. And Yoshua is the living Torah, is he not? We need to buy from the mind of Yoshua. We sell out our filthy old dirty garment. We sell out our dirty ways. We sell out our will. We sell out our attitude. We sell it and we buy what he gives unto us from his mouth without money. Yeah. He's also the power of the sword, the two-edged sword that represents uh, the whole house of Yisrael. Two-edged swords. Uh, he said, and his countenance was as the sun shining in its strength. That there was a radiance of great brightness that only Yah, my eyes, had to be the eyes that Yah had anointed with Isaiah that I could see. 
Because there is no man that's going to walk out there and look at the sun shining in the fullness of his brightness in the middle of summertime. You cannot bear it. You cannot look upon it. And you can be crazy all you want to and try it. It will burn your iris and you will go blind. And that's a fact. When there's a solar eclipse, they will tell you, don't look at it. And there are those that uh, in their stubbornness and their defiance, uh, they have looked at it for a minute or two. And now many are blind because of that. I remember in the 60s when there was one, uh, it was a frightening thing for me as a child. Uh, and I would dare to look at it that way. There were those that did, that they suffered behind that Yisra'ya. And this is the presence of Yoshua Hamashiach. That's why the Torah of Yah is like a fire. And when the enemy come against that fire, the fire consume them. We have a mighty weapon. We have a strong weapon. It is a mighty weapon. And there's no weaponry that can combat the weapon, weapon tree of Yah. It's a mighty weapon. We have a strong fortress, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what comes out of Yeshua. That's what comes out of him. Hallelujah. It is one thing, Yisraya, that we, that we tend because we just do not give him time and the reverence that he commands us. He commands us in all things to give Torah, doesn't he? He tells us. He tells us to give Torah. We express that with Torah. And we express that with Yada. It is the knowledge of knowing the power of our praises unto him. And this is what the enemy is trying to rob Yisraya of because there's great power in that. How do I know that? Because I listen to the voice of Daweed as he speaks to us here in Tehillim. Psalms, I want you to hear this. We don't realize what we have. This is what he says in the book of Tehillim, Psalms, Psalms 149 and verse 6. That we said, let, did not Shaul said to us in uh, uh, Philippi to let the same mind that was in Yoshua be in us as well? He said, let the high praises, the high praises, the exalted praises of Yah. Being there in Yisraya in our mouth. Why? And a two-edged sword in our hand. This is the sword because we cannot allow or we cannot exude the high praises unless we have the sword of the Ruach, which is the Torah of Yah. We must have the sword of the Spirit. And the only way that we have the assurance of this mighty weapon tree there must be the high praises of Yah. Not just praises, but the high praises. The exalted praises. Above our circumstances and situation, there's a praise that flow from our loins uh, that it, it is not inhibited by our flesh. That our flesh cannot inhibit it. Uh, to say, slow down, uh, be quiet. It cannot. It rises above that. In Yisraya's loin, there must be the high praises. And in our hands, it is a two-edged sword in our right hand because uh, Yeshua sits at the right hand of the Father. He sits at the right hand. And he has us on the right side. You understand, Yisrael? That's why the enemy wants to impede that. And you think that I don't have the energy. We must allow the high praises of Yah to be in our loins. And the two-edged sword... That is the mouth of Yoshua, the words that proceed out of his mouth, like Yachaharan said. Out of his mouth, out of his feth, proceed a two-edged sword. The sword of Almighty God is a powerful entity for Yisrael. It is. We must walk in the Ruach of Yah. We walk in the flesh, we cannot please Yah. The carnal mind is not subject unto the Torah of Yah, and neither indeed can be. It can never relent to the truth of Yah. 
That's why we must sell this begats, this garment of deceit, this garment of treachery and lies, the concepts of our minds that we develop, the lies of our secretive lives and our wicked nature, we must sell it. Sell it back to the devil. Sell it back. You tell him you don't want the price of his uh, 30 shekels of silver. You don't want the price of that. We're not the Akon. That we see the nice Babylonian garment and we hide these treacherous, wicked things in our hearts. Yes, Lord, I sell it back. Give it back. Sell it back to him. Sell out. How do I do that? Impelling, destroying, killing the very loss of your spirit and your flesh. You must impel it. The life that drives you for this and that, to do this and that, you must kill it. I said... I don't know if it was Yawasadaka yeah, Yusipia. I said the other day, and I was somewhat sad because I ponder a lot of things, Yisrael. And I said, you know what, Ak? Uh, I don't recall. I don't recall who it was. One of the Ak. Uh, I said, it is so sad. There was a time that the bath of Tizayon. It was a beauty that every woman desired to be a beautiful wife. They were taught, they were raised, they were nurtured. And I say the women today don't even desire to be wise. They want their education, they want schooling, they want this. To prepare herself for a beautiful man of strength, integrity and dignity of Yah. It is sad in my heart, they want everything but to be an excellent and a beautiful wife. Look how the world has raped even the bath of Tezayon. There was a time that young women wanted to be a wife and they were nurtured to be wives. And today, I said, it's so sad. I don't know who. Did I talk to you about that? I said, it's just sad. Yeah, and it makes, it was you, my friend. I said, you know, Yawasa Doc, I said, they, nobody. He came in the office and I was there. I said, you know, my son, the women don't desire. They want to go to college. And you hear the same while the people of the diaspora must be educated. Let my, my friend, before Mr. George Wallace, Wallace, the governor of Alabama, when he stood and said, no Negroes are coming into this college. That wasn't in the 50s, it was in the 60s. When the people of the diaspora owned hotels and restaurants, clothing stores and shoe stores, had a plethora of business and commerce in the neighborhoods, and all of a sudden go to school, get a good education, hell, they have no businesses today. You tell me that's what an education does? I don't want it. I don't want my child to have that. I want my child to have the knowledge of Torah, of Almighty Yah. And look at where education has reduced a people. They don't even own the damn restaurants in their own neighborhood. In my days, they own them all. Chicken go-go's. They own the, own the pharmaceuticals. They own the growth. They own it all. That's a fact. And look at what education has done. You might as well say hallelujah there. Yeah. I'm going to finish up my zakhin yaramiya. What do we buy? What is this sword, Yam? Is it of any great importance? Well, we know Yakahan said out of Yahshua's mouth went this two-edged sword. Unless there's the witness to that truth. It is of no value. Well, I found the witness as I searched the book. It's in Yeshua. It's in Isaiah chapter 49. Hallelujah. This is the power, the testimony of Yahshua and his strength unto Yisrael. It says in Yeshua 49 2, And Yah has made my feth like a sharp sword. That's what he has made Yisrael, a mouth like, like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he 
hid me. That's how he's going to hide us in the shadow. Come on, Yisrael. Yeah, we understand the shadow of God's hands. In the shadow of his hand. He has made our faith like a two-edged sword. Your Kahan said, out of his mouth went forth a two-edged sword. He was hidden in the hand of Yah. For the prince of the world or the princes of the world had known they were never impelled, destroyed him, for they knew not. He's going to present us to the world and say, take your best shot, for they're hidden in my hand. No weapon that's formed against Yisraya shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against Yisraya shall be brought, you shall judge, they shall be brought into condemnation, Yisraya. He says, and Yah has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadows of his hands has he hid me, Yeshua. And made me a polished shaft, a glittering, glittering sword. In his quiver, the sheath of the sword has he hid me. Amen. You know, you can camouflage your tanks all you want to. But the military preciseness and the skillfulness of Yah, he knows where everyone is. But when he put us in his quiver, his sheath. Now he keeps that hand on that. No man can pluck us out of the hand of Yah Yisrael. Don't even allow our own fears to pluck us out. Don't even allow... Any kind of trepidation of fear to overcharge your heart, Yisrael. Yeah, no man. When he put us in his quiver, there is no man that can pluck us out. We are hit. No man can find us. And he's going to pull us out like a polished shaft. And the light of our glistering, the power of the testimony of Yeshua, it shall come out of our mouths like a sword, like a two edge. And everyone that rises up against the power of that testimony, they shall be brought into condemnation. Oh, you don't have to believe it. It may sound like a fantasy. It may sound like a fantasy, but it's the truth, Yisrael. We're hidden in the quiver of Yah. We're by his side, his right side. No man is going to pluck us out of his hands. Hallelujah. He's given us a weapon that's bona fide. It just takes imuna. It'd be difficult to buy a thousand dollar pistol now. You get a nice pistol, it's gonna cost you a grand. You may get some three or four hundred dollars when you go to click, click, and then it's then it then it uh it, it hangs up on you. <laughs> and, and someone got something <laughs> and they just go and chat 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 cha. You better have on a, 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 a protective shield, a breastplate of righteousness. You got your little Mac 10, you go boom, boom, and then all of a sudden the bullet, the best of them will do that. That's why many young men got killed in Vietnam when they had the M14. That's why they modified it to the M16. Can I tell you? I've shot the M16 thousands and thousands of rounds, and they all hang up. And so they got this carbine one. Now, can I tell you something? Over there in Iran and Iraq, that one hung up too. The soldier boys will tell you. And you went to fire him and yours hung up. And he had that old Molikov, that old, old weapon, web, that old Russian weapon. And he blew the top of your head off. We've got to have a weapon that's much more powerful than the tanks and the military armament of this life. we got to, Yisrael. Because if we don't, we're not going to win this battle. We need a sword that is powerful. We need a united house of Yisrael. That's why we cannot be, we cannot be a segregated people. We cannot be divided. A house divided cannot stand. You can't divide Yisrael. You can't define the Ach and the Ho. You can't divide yourself from one another. If we're wrong, just say you're wrong. And move on from there. Even a child will say they're wrong. Even a child will unite with each other. And that's a fact. It's simple, but it's the truth. Hallelujah. I don't intend for this to be dynamic, but it is dynamic. You understand? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yah is going to fight against the nations, Yisrael. And Yah Kahan, he speaks of ones that call the Nicolaitans, these wicked beasts out of hell. And he tells us how he's going to fight against this, this, 
this spiritual mindset, just like Mr. Newt Gingrich says that we're going to colonize the moon. You cannot do that. You're wrong for venturing out there. You're wrong to try to find him that way. You're not going to find him that way. But Yokohan speaks so profoundly here in Revelation 2.16. Yah gives us running warning. He tells us to make teshuva. Revelation 2.16, he says, repent or else I will come unto you quickly. And this is how Yahshua is going to fight. He said, I will come unto you quickly. I will come unto you quickly. And I will fight. I will fight with skillfulness. I will fight against you. That's what he says. Who wants to fight against Yah? I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. That's our weaponry. It is the power of the testimony. Of Almighty Yahweh. That's our, that, that's our weaponry, Yisrael. It is the sword of the Ruach of Yah. It is the word of Yah that flows from us. It flows from a rich well. We fight against the forces of hell with the, with the Ruach of our mouths. It is a powerful sword. You can't go out there with a pistol and make somebody do something right. That doesn't bring conviction. That folks say, kill me then. Oh, there are a lot of folks that are dead today because they said, Kill me, dog, coward. And they just went boom, boom. Sure it is. That's how we fight. Our battle is with the testimony of power, Yisra'ya. Let no one tell you to buy a weapon. No, nobody tell you to go for a... Listen to me. Let no one put that kind of fear in you, telling you to stock up on guns uh, and ammunition. Don't let them tell you that. Don't let them tell you that. You may have a gun in your house, but don't trust that to be your strength of survival. You don't do that. But let no one tell you uh, the purpose of buying a gun uh, to protect your heritage. Don't let them do that. Don't do it that way, Yisrael. Should we have guns around here? We have weapons that will reach out a long, long way to knock the deer down. What a little 45. There are weapons that they got weapons that will shoot three quarters of a mile, a mile, and hit the target. You don't, do you see someone from a mile? Come on. You go, out, go to the ocean. Where you see that horizon meet with the water, that's 25 miles. That's 25 miles. That's what it is. If I was standing out there, could you see me? They got stuff they can, they can, they can, they can, they can be in Washington, D.C. and drop everything right here the way they want to precisely. Boom, 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 boom. In these little crazy radical fringe groups talking about saving them. Damn America. Damn her wicked system that has oppressed, enslaved, and robbed the masses of the people. That Mr. No Good Dog of a Human, a rich bastard that makes $57,000 a day, Mr. Romney, Romney, said, I'm not worrying about the poor. They have a safety net to catch them. I'm worried about the middle class. He doesn't give a damn about the middle class. This, this stupidity they, they fall in the minds of the people that they think, of, oh, I got me a president. We're going to get Obama out. You're not going to get Obama out. Yah put Obama there. He's going to stay there until he finished the course of Yah. Your damn votes are not going to vote bomb out. And you putting up Mr. Newt Gingrich or Mr. Romney, they're not going. E even the nation doesn't want them to be. They're not going to put bomb out. That's a fact. Y'all got bomber there. It's amazing how ignorant they call the man. The man uh, is a constitutional lawyer. And these ingrate fools, uh, they don't even have a high school diploma. Ignorant as hell. Uh, I watched little clips. Tell me what capitalism is. Well, you know, it means, well, what is socialism? Well, well, it means, uh, well, well, Mr. Obama wants to be a socialist. He's got a socialist government. Well, what is socialism? What is it? And then they will say, can I ask you, is this socialist? Sarah Palin was the governor of Alaska, was he? Yes, he's a foreign conservative. Tea Party member. Do you understand what they do in the state of Alaska? the proceeds from the gas, that every citizen share in with that? Would you call that socialism? Well, no, I wouldn't call it that. But that's what socialism is. It is that everyone enjoy 
the substance in a system uh, of social responsibility. These are ignorant damn fools. I will not make myself look like a jackass if I didn't know uh, what the matter consists of. I'm wise enough to divert the attention from that. But that's it. They're not going to put Mr. Obama out, and he won't get my vote, but they're not going to put him out. He is the man for the hour. And believe me, you prophesy what Mr. Pat Robertson said, that, quote, God told him who the next president will be, unquote. He won't tell nobody right now because he's afraid to say it's going to be Obama, Obama. And his God did tell him. The devil did tell him that it's Mr. Obama. He's going to win by landslide. You watch what I tell you. I don't take no, I don't get goosebumps behind that. I want to close here. I want two more verses. Three, and I want to close. It says here in the book of Ephesians, Shaul says, this is an instruction unto us, that we must take the helmet of salvation. It says it like that, Ephesians 6, 17. Taking the helmet of salvation. Well, we know what the helmet stands for. It stands for the rush, isn't it? And your sure is the head of man. So we must take Yahshua as our head. He must be the, he must be, he must be the, the captain of our rush that commands our mind and our brains. He said, and we must take the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Yah. Yahshua is the word of Yah, isn't he? That's why when he speaks, it's a fire, Yisrael. You're not going to take the constitution of America, damn her constitution. Damn the constitution of America. I live on the Yah's constitution, so the constitution of America doesn't, it has no weight with me. None whatsoever. Because I trust in Yah. I don't, I'm not worried about the system of America, them doing me injustice. I don't worry about that. I will do the just way that Yah commands me. If we live on the soul, we're going to die. And these damn cowards of bastards telling you to buy uh, the swords and weapons, they're going to die that way. You watch, uh, I'm going to die in your shoe. I'm going to lay, your shoe said, uh, no man. You hear me? No man, he said, takes my life. You can't take it. You can't take my life. No man. No weapons can take my life. He said, I'll lay it down. And if I lay it down, I pick it up again. I'm going to lay down this life. And I'm going to pick it up again. You understand why? Because I'm the elect. I'm a child of the Most High. That's right. That's what he said. We take the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Yah. That's what we take. Is there anything more powerful than his Torah? Nothing. Shaul gives us confirmation here in Ibram, Hebrews 4.12. He tells us, for the word of Yah is quick. It's quick. It's beyond the ability to read. It's quick. It is powerful. And it is sharper than any to a sword. That's what the word of Yah is. You tell me what the Yahshua, he is the word of Yah. So he spoke everything that Yahshua and Yah, Yah, Yahushua spoke that I read to us. He says, it pierces or it cuts with great precision even the dividing uh, separating asunder the nefesh even the nefesh the life in man from the ruach from the spirit of man that i don't i can't explain that i know everyone don't call me and tell me and explain it to me I had a man to call me on yesterday and one of the most damnable silly questions uh, he asked me the question and I said, this is so stupid. I said, my friend, I tell you what, I don't know the answer. Because it was a stupid question. It was just stupid. You could tell he had no knowledge. And he wants to all of a sudden begin to teach. I said, hold up. Uh, uh, I tell you what, my friend, I I'm not going to let you do that to me. When you find the answer to that question in the Torah, you call me and let me know, all right? You do that. Oh, okay, I'll do that. I saw that you do that, my friend. Because it was stupid. It was so stupid, it's not even in the Torah. People are stupid. They are some of the most craziest. We have a sure word of prophecy. Your sure is that sure word. I want to close with this. He said, for the word of Yah is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the nefesh and the ruach and the joint and the marrow. And it is a very powerful a discerner of the thought and the intents 
of the Lamb. When the word is spoken, it will discern your intent, our motive, my purpose. It will show you what that is, that it is not lined up with the constitution of Almighty Yah. It is one thing we have assurance in, and we can rest in that assurance. It's the power of the mouth of Yahshua. When he spoke, when they came to subdue him, when he spoke, they all fell backwards. And they're going to fall backwards. When they come to try to overcome Yisra'ya, they're going to go back. Believe me, Yisra'ya. Last verse I want to read here. Yeshaya 19, I'm sorry, Gilyana, Revelation 19, 15. It says here, the vision of Yahshua as he goes forth to destroy the beasts and the armies. It says here, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. They will use all of their military might, but the sword of his mouth, the words of his mouth, the promise of Yahti Yisra'ya. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he shall smite not just a nation, but the Goyim, the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall tread the rind press of the fierce of the wrath of Almighty Yahweh. That is a weaponry. It is the indignation. And out of Yahshua's mouth, as he shall fight for us against the very encroaching of hell, the beast, and the kingdom, uh, he's going to fight against them with the sword of his mouth. We're not going to fight against this beast and this beast of the Roman entity and the Babylonian, the Persian, medio persian Empire. We see culminated in this vile entity today that we call America or the kingdoms of the world, the superpowers. He's going to deliver us, Yisrael. And instead of buying silver and gold, assist this messenger of Yah. Send the funds here and I will use it to expand the work of Yah. And then when you come, we will have food for you to eat. How about that? You don't buy no weapon. You don't take your funds and spill it on a Smith and Weston to fight. So don't buy a gun for no, for to protect yourself or you're going to fight against this beast. You're not going to win. You're not going to win by buying their silver and they're marking it up. And you buy it and think you're winning. You're not going to win. For the, all of the silver and the gold and these liars say that they're not going to cast it in the street. But Yah says they're going to cast their silver and their gold. And these are damn deceiver. A bastard tells you that he's a dirty bastard. I don't care who he is. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May his strength fill your heart. May he cause our eyes to be open and our understanding to be enlarged by the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. We greet you all that have joined us. We hope that Yah has barak and help you and cause your heart to delight and rejoice in your Shu HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Don't listen to these damn crooks and liars. We have a military power that is much greater than that. And Yah is the one that's going to fight for us. He has always fought for Yisrael. Yah. We are his beauty. We are his elect. He has hid us in his sheath. You understand in his quiver? He's going to fight for us, Yisrael. Yah. I know in our natural, because our natural minds are crazy as hell. They don't understand. Our minds don't understand the things of Yah. He's going to fight for us. I know we seem worth it, but to him, we, we are his jewels. I know some of the things that, that, that even that battle us in our mind, but you, we're still his jewels. We're still the jewels of Yah. We're going to make up his crown. How big is his head? I tell you what, uh, we're going to be the jewels of his crown. And we see each other, my mind, that's, that, ah, the splendor of Yah shall resonate from Yisra'ya. That's it, Yisra'ya. So don't worry about what the world says. Don't buy no weapons, Yisrael. And these lying, false, damn Jesus thumpers and these, these, these conservative thumpers uh, and these, uh, 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 and these uh, uh, malicious thumpers, damn them. They're going to die that way. You watch. You watch. They're going to die because they're fearful men. It takes a strong man to stand by Imuna. That's a real man there. That's a real man. That's a real man. He said, lay down my life. You can't take man. You can't kill me. You, you cannot. You cannot. Either he is the truth and the whole truth. They will say, this man is a crazy man. Let's get, man, he's a fool. This man is a fool. He's a crazy fool, man. <laughs> I don't even want to kill him. He ain't worth it. But that's all right. We lay down our lives, Yisrael. Yeah, that's why we must impel our nature, everything about us, kill it. And let your sure rise. May he barak you all. Let us stand to our feet. All right. Yeah. So, Maria, we do barak you for your Shuhamashir, your riches. The simple truth, Yah, 
Let it fill the hearts of Yisrael. We understand. It is so simple that even the babies understand. Bless us all. Take Zachin down the highway safely. And all of those that have joined us, Barak them and, and, and the Echot, uh, Blunt and, and uh, Abiyah and all, strengthen them in your sure's mighty name. Grant unto us the riches of your knowledge in this hour. We need it more than anything. Forgive us of our sins, for we shall follow you in all things. We barak you, O Maria, in your sure's name. With our voices we cry, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Ya barak Yisrael.